Hey there, Mountaineers, I'm Matterhorn Matt, and welcome to episode 8 of Historyland. In this episode, we'll be talking about the history of Disneyland Paris and why it failed. Let's get started. Here on this channel, we talk about cancelled Disney projects a lot, and one of the big reasons that a lot of those plans fell through was because of the financial disaster that was Euro Disneyland, now known as Disneyland Paris. So, what went wrong with the park that forced the heads of Disney to outright cancel other new parks, and even new lands? Well, back in the late 80s, Disney noticed that a large number of guests visiting their parks were Europeans. So naturally, they thought it would be best to build a park in Europe. So in 1984, the heads of Disney's theme park division, Dick Nunes and Jim Cora, came up with a list of 1,200 possible locations in Europe for the park. They eventually settled on a location near the town of Marnevelli, and I'm sure I butchered that, so I'm really sorry. Construction then began in August of 1988, and shortly after, Disney MGM Studios Europe, now known as Walt Disney Studios, went into development with a scheduled opening set for 1996. An entertainment district similar to Downtown Disney and Walt Disney World was also in development. Seven hotels themed to different regions of the US were also constructed, including Disneyland Hotel, Disney's Hotel New York, Disney's Newport Bay Club, Disney's Sequoia Lodge, Disney's Hotel Cheyenne, Disney's Hotel Santa Fe, and Disney's Davy Crockett Ranch, totaling 5,800 rooms. Tony Baxter, known for rides such as Big Thunder Mountain, The Indiana Jones Adventure, and Splash Mountain, served as executive producer of the park. And on April 12th, Euro Disneyland opened. But financial troubles and bad marketing took its toll on the park, leaving its future in question. Coming up next, learn about Disney history with Matterhorn Matt on Historyland. Winter? It's a great time to go. See for yourself. Bell. You'll meet Beauty and the Beast in person and right now see a spectacular live musical show straight from Disney's new hit film. There's so much to do all over Euro Disney this winter, you'll want to stay forever. See you tomorrow, Mickey. Call this number now or see your travel agent for winter rates. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, Matterhorn Matt, how could a Disney theme park in Europe possibly fail? Well, there are lots of answers to that question. First, Disney ended up buying a lot of land around the area of Marne la Vallée, essentially isolating the park from the rest of Europe, which in turn isolated support from outside businesses. Now, this kind of strategy might have worked in the 70s when Walt secretly bought 43 square miles of land in Florida knowing the businesses would come to his park, but it seemed greedy to buy up all the land for Euro Disneyland, since only Disney could benefit from the park. Second, Disney had a really bad marketing strategy for the park. While encouraging guests to stay in Disney hotels and eat meals in the park, even though the park was at least 35 minutes from Paris, and the hotels were extremely expensive, almost comparable to the best hotels in Paris, and the park's proximity to Paris created competition between the two, where tourists might want to visit Paris over the park. Paris also could lose a lot of customer traffic, forcing many businesses to oppose the park. Third, Disney essentially treated the park as an American view of Europe, rather than the native view, causing a rift in the culture. And not only that, but the advertising campaign was mostly American, aimed at children. There's a magical place in the heart of Europe where the stars of Disney animated film classics become your friends. Disneyland Paris. Someone you know can't wait to go. Disneyland Paris. 
This may work in the US where Disney parks are associated with happiness and childhood memories, but in Europe, theme parks are unestablished, requiring the marketing to convince everyone that the park would surpass everyone's expectations. Most European guests weren't used to staying overnight in the theme park, so the seven hotels were a big risk. Disney also seemed very overconfident in the project as a whole, with high prices and the thought that the large scale of the project would sell the park. The opening day of the park was also a nightmare. Guests were warned of chaotic roads due to the high expected attendance numbers, but by midday, the attendance was below 25,000, which is extremely low compared to Walt Disney World's opening attendance of 400,000. And that August was the start of the European recession. To make matters worse, in 1992, 25% of the workers at the park, which is around 3,000 people, quit because of unacceptable working conditions. All of this and more caused the financial disaster that was Disneyland Paris and the cancellation of other Disney projects like Westcott, Tomorrowland 2055, and many more. But good performance leaves the park's future in question once again. Up next, learn about Disney history and more with Matterhorn Matt on Historyland. Disneyland this summer is big. It's Disneyland big. The biggest ever. Only this summer can you see big parades day and night. Experience big thrills like Splash Mountain. Have the chance to win a car every day and see Dick Tracy live on stage. Only this summer is this big. Summer party Disneyland big. Come on. It's one summer you just can't miss. Alright guys, I wanted to say right off the bat that even though I've never been there, I think Disneyland Paris is absolutely beautiful. The architecture mixed with amazing theming by Tony Baxter really sets the park apart from all the others. And hope remained for the park when it reported its first ever quarterly profit of $35.5 million in 2003. And in the same year, the park also became the number one tourist destination in Europe, beating out the Eiffel Tower. And more recently, the Walt Disney Company bought back all the shares it sold off in the 90s, which essentially means that the Walt Disney Company owns all of Disneyland Paris, with lots of changes coming to the park in the future. And hopefully, future guests will be able to have their dreams come true when they visit Disneyland Paris. And that's the history of Euro Disneyland, or Disneyland Paris. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'm sorry for such a short one. I've been crunched on time recently with school and work and putting together the designs for the shirts. But I think you guys are going to be really happy with the outcome. I'll link articles in the description with more information on the park's history, so feel free to check those out if you want. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with all your Disney-loving friends. And as always, I want to hear what you guys think about the whole Euro Disneyland debacle. And your experience if you've ever been to the park. I love reading your guys' comments. If you haven't already, go watch my video from last week to enter in a 500 subscriber giveaway of Matterhorn Matt t-shirts. And be sure to listen to this week's Matterhorn Mondays, where Alex the Historian and I talk about untouchable rides in the Disney parks. And mm -hmm. I wanted to know what your what your ideas were on rides that Disney, if Disney were to change or demolish, fans would totally go, like, berserk. Oh, boy. <laughs> Where to begin? <laughs> uh, okay, well, first of all, uh, it would have to be Haunted Mansion. Oh. Uh, I really think that if if anyone messed with that, everyone would go completely berserk <laughs> um, and I think one of the, one of the things about rides that, that make them untouchable is the fact that they're classic and people have ridden them when they were children mm -hmm. and they have, they've created memories on those rides. And so going back and doing something that alters the ride in any way, people feel like they're messing 
with something that is theirs. And if you haven't already, go support me on Patreon and follow me on Twitter. I'll see you next time, Mountaineers. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow.